Welcome to the Words in Season podcast. This week, I want to talk about a scripture that is a little hard to swallow. And sometimes I don't even want to read it. But God knows how important it is to the human condition to have guidance that is outside of ourselves so that I don't come up with my own ideas of the way things should be. We need his word, the divine word, his perspective on life so that we can live the abundant life. The life that I choose and I have picked out for myself, even though, yes, maybe it's comfortable or maybe it feels good sometimes or whatever the world may say about the lifestyle that I lead, unless I choose his way, because he's Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life, that I will never be fully satisfied. I will not live in the abundant life that he has for me. So the scripture that I want to talk about here is in Ephesians 4. It says, be angry and in your anger do not sin and do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And so do not give the devil a foothold in your life. So what does this scripture mean? What is the Holy Spirit trying to tell Christians through this? This would have been a letter from Paul to the, to the Ephesian church, but it was meant for Christians today as, a, as an example and as a level of guidance by the Holy Spirit through the person of Paul to the modern day church. So, okay, Holy Spirit, what does this mean? Be angry, but sin not. So these are some tips this week about what it means to process anger and to do not sin. So my name is Kara Marie Morris. Thank you for tuning in to the Words in Season podcast. Remember that every time you open the Word of God, that Jesus has a word in season for you. When life's got me weary, when I'm feeling tired, just one word in season and my heart comes to life. So again, we're looking at Ephesians 4.26. Be angry and sin not, and therefore do not give the enemy, the devil, a stronghold or a foothold in your life. So what does that mean? It means that there is a way to experience emotions and life and not sin. Glory to God. That in itself is something to give praise to God for that I am not my emotion. Just because I have certain types of feelings that come to me throughout my day doesn't mean that I have to fall into the trap of the enemy. It also doesn't mean that feelings are good or bad. If it's a feeling that leads towards evil then or sin, then those feelings are bad and those are wrong and those are ones that I need to change. If it's a feeling or emotion that would be in line with his word, that there's, there's no condemnation in Christ, then fine. It's good. But emotions are not good or bad. They are just something that we experience as human beings. Jesus had emotions as a human being and yet he did not sin. So he is our perfect example in that, that we can experience these emotions and yet choose not to sin. So this is how to, how I've experienced and how the Lord showed me how to appropriately process anger. I am still learning, but this is the journey that the Lord has taken me to appropriately process anger. Number one, number one, go to God and not to people. Do not sin, he said. You may have this emotion, but don't sin. That means don't gossip about it with your friend or with your mom or put it on social media so that everyone can expose and see the sin of this person or see your own sin. Go to God first. Number two, ask God, why did this make me so mad? Time and time again, the Holy Spirit has shown me at work or whatever that's happened in my life, one of the biggest strongholds that I have to deal with is people pleasing, being a pleaser of man rather than pleasing God. And I have to realize that the reason I'm getting so upset, so anxious, so worried, even angry, is because I don't feel like I am measuring up to this example or to this perfect person that I'm supposed to be. But that is not the case. I can only be who I am in Christ. 
That's not an excuse to not do things I don't want to do. And that's not an excuse to say, I'm, I'm never going to be perfect. But it does mean that I am always learning and growing and processing emotions as they come. Processing them and taking them to God and saying, God, why did this make me so angry? And what's amazing is the Holy Spirit will show you every time. I know there was an example for me at work. I was thinking, oh gosh. I mean, every day that day, I was having to ask the Lord to forgive me. I'm getting angry at little old ladies asking me where the yarn is, where I work at. Why am I getting so angry? It's not their fault. They're the reason I have a job. Kara, get it together. Come on. And I, I realized the reason why I was getting so anxious and so angry was because I was afraid of not meeting my boss's expectations. So I start freaking out, which is not helpful. That's not the way that I'm supposed to process this. I'm supposed to do the work. And if it means changing lanes in the middle of a sentence or a middle of a, uh, of a task, I know, and I need to lean into God more that he has given me the grace for whatever task shows up and I have to switch gears and I have to switch gears and I have to switch gears. Every person does it, whether it's at work or you're a mom trying to field phone calls and trying to take care of your kids, or you're a teacher trying to do all the things that you're required to do. God will give us the grace to change lanes so that we will not be anxious and angry all the time. That's not God's will for us to be anxious and angry all the time. So I go to God first. I ask God, why did this make me so angry? I ask God for grace and I ask God to forgive me. I'm sorry, God, if I did sin. Whenever I get angry and if I'd go to someone and I talk about that situation and it need, didn't need to happen, I can ask God for grace and, to, and for his forgiveness to be able to process these emotions in a healthy way, in a healthy manner. Ask God if you need to go to that person. Sometimes it's just between you and God and you don't even need to go to that person. In fact, it would be more hurtful if you brought it up to that person because they didn't even know. So you can ask God, do I need to go to that person or is this just between me and you? Another thing, don't hold a grudge, let it go. Let God, allow God and ask him to forgive you and give you the grace to forgive that person. Let's go to Mark 11. Mark 11, 24 says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. We are supposed to forgive and we have the ability to do it because Jesus said we could. These are the words of Jesus Christ. He would never tell us something to do if we didn't have the ability to do it. So we can ask God for the grace to forgive and we can ask God for the ability to forgive and he will give that to us and he will allow us to let it go. Doesn't mean that I'm gonna know exactly what that looks like. Depending on the size of the situation, the emotional process may take shorter or longer. Maybe a work thing and it's really quick. If it's a family thing, it may be a process of letting go and forgiving. But asking God and inviting him into that situation, God, how do I forgive this person? God, how do I let this go? He will give you the grace, the ability, and the strategy to be able to do it. He will allow you to emotionally process whatever comes into your life in the day. You are not to be angry, anxious, worried. Those are toxic emotions. You are, as a Christian, as a believer, supposed to enjoy his rest, his peace, his joy, his strength. That is his promise to you. And that is what we are supposed to experience. It's not if you're good enough or if you're perfect, because that will never happen. But it's us relying on him so that we can experience these good emotions and not this spiral of toxic emotions that plague so many people's lives. And it says in 2 Timothy 1.7, we haven't been given a spirit of fear. We haven't been given the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of anger, the spirit of fear of man or fear of failure. But he has given us a spirit of power to be able to experience love and a sound, calm, well-balanced mind. Let's go to Zephaniah. Zephaniah is in the Old Testament. Zephaniah 3.17 says, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves you. He takes great delight in you, 
and he calms you with his love. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but he will rejoice over you with singing. We have a calm, well-balanced mind because he calms us with his love. So I don't have to be angry and sin, but I can be angry if those emotions come during the day, I can take it straight to God. I can ask God, why did this make me so mad? And I can ask God for the grace to forgive and to let go. And then the final thing is to repent. Simply means to go the other way. Whenever I sin, whenever I have gotten angry or have processed emotions in an inappropriate way with gossip or fear or being worried or being anxious or whatever that sin is in my life and that's how I process that emotion, God gives me the gift of repentance. As a child of God, he didn't say, well, Kara, three strikes are out. I wish you could have done better. But he gives us that grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. And he says, repent. And in that repentance, I turn and I go the other way. Repentance means a hundred percent commitment that I no longer want to see things that way anymore. I no longer want to process my emotions like that anymore, whether it's uh, through a person or through just vegging out on the TV and unplugging from the world and say, forget it, I'm never trying a relationship again, or whatever it is, I'm going to process my emotions through a healthy means of going to God first asking God, why did this make me so angry? And allowing him to give me the grace to forgive, to forgive myself, to forgive the other person, to forgive the situation, to forgive the people, the nation, the workplace, whatever it is, and to let it go in his hands and say, God, this is too big for my hands and repent. That means let it go and go the other way. It allows me to submit to God's word which brings freedom. Submitting to leaders in my life brings freedom. Saying, okay, God, your word is a higher opinion in a higher way than mine. My boss, my pastor, my leaders in my life, their word, they have spoken through the word of God. That means that it is a has higher place in my life than my own words, my own experience, my own old man processing, whatever that means. People use old things. That means things that are not in line with God's word. However, you used to process those things in an unhealthy way. That means now in Christ, I don't process my emotions, anger, fear, worry, doubt. I don't process it that way. It doesn't show up in my life that way anymore. And when it does, I see it for what it is. The word of God and the Holy Spirit, they expose it for what it is. And I submit to the word. I submit to the pastor. I submit to the things that this, that is spoken from the pulpit of my church because I trust that God's word has a stronger hold in my life and that it is a better way for me to experience abundant life than my small little thinking just because it's what I've been comfortable with just because it's what I can understand in my own mind doesn't mean that I'm going to hold on to it any longer. So that is what the Holy Spirit, and that's the word in season this week. That's what the Holy Spirit is saying in Ephesians 1, 26. Be angry, but sin not, and don't give the devil a foothold. That means emotions are going to come. Emotions are not good, and they're not bad. They're just something we experience as a human being. But what we do with those emotions and how we process them that is how we don't or do give a, the devil a foothold in my life. And I want to be determined that whenever I feel toxic emotions, when I'm feeling anger, jealousy, fear, worry, first of all, my first response is to go to my heavenly father. So thank you for watching the Words in Season podcast. I pray this was a blessing to you. Remember that every time that you tune in, that Jesus has a word in season for you. God bless you. Even the world is